Below is the PDF for the random variable x, and here our goal is to find the CDF for x. Let me start by writing down the definition of a CDF. We use capital F to notate that we are dealing with a CDF as compared to the lowercase f, which means that the function is a PDF. Usually, people will write capital F of t for a CDF. Here, we replace the lowercase x with a lowercase t for convenience and to not get confused with too many x's flying around. You can always change this lowercase t back to a lowercase x, and some teachers will ask that you change it back to an x as your last step. By definition, f of t is equal to the probability that x is less than or equal to t. Since x is a random variable, the probability that x is less than or equal to t is equal to the integral from negative infinity to t of the PDF with respect to x. Since we are integrating over x, this is why we like to use t, so that we don't end up plugging in x after integrating over x, which can feel uncomfortable. Okay. So before we get started, a lot of PDFs, including this one, are piecewise functions, which can really trip students up when they're integrating. I highly recommend that you graph your piecewise PDF before you move forward to finding your CDF. Here we have two linear lines with negative slope between negative 1 and 0 and between 1 and 2. The PDF must be defined for all values of x. Therefore, the PDF takes the value 0 for x less than negative 1, between 0 and 1, and again when x is greater than 2. See, you might have thought that this PDF only had three pieces, though by graphing it, we can see that it actually has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pieces. Therefore, our CDF will be a piecewise function with 5 pieces. Let me write that out now, and then I'll find each piece in a minute. The first piece will be for when t is less than negative 1. Next, we'll have a piece for when t is between negative 1 and 0. Next, we'll have a piece for when t is between 0 and 1. Then we'll have a piece for when t is between 1 and 2. And lastly, when t is more than 2. We will need to consider each piece as we calculate the integrals involved in finding our CDF. Okay, so let's start with the first piece where t is less than negative 1. By definition, capital F of t is the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to t. For continuous random variable x, this is the same as the integral from negative infinity to t of the PDF with respect to x. Okay, so what is the PDF when t is some number less than negative 1? Remember, we are not plugging in a value for t. Though let's look back to our PDF and we can see that we know for all values of t, less than negative 1, the PDF is equal to 0. Therefore, we are integrating the 0 with respect to x, which is just 0. So nice, we're done with the first piece. The value of the CDF when t is less than negative 1 is 0. Let's move forward to the second piece of the CDF, where t is between negative 1 and 0. We have the definition of a CDF, where f of t is equal to the integral from negative infinity to t of the PDF with respect to x. Okay, so to find this integral, we need to be considerate of the fact that the PDF function is a piecewise function. Therefore, this integral is going to have multiple pieces. Let's look back to our graph. Starting at negative infinity, the PDF takes on the value of 0 until x gets to negative 1. Next, the PDF takes on the value of negative x, which is this linear line, when x is between negative 1 and whatever t is. Recall, right now we do not know what t is. It's just some number between negative 1 and 0. 
Okay, so let's write this down. From negative infinity to negative 1, we're integrating 0 with respect to x. Next, from negative 1 to t, we're integrating negative x with respect to x. Okay, so why are we integrating negative x? This is because the PDF is negative x when x is any number between negative 1 and 0. The integral of 0 is 0. The integral of negative x is negative 1 half x squared. We are evaluating that from negative 1 to t. Plug in t first and get negative 1 half t squared, subtracted, negative 1 half times negative 1 squared, the negatives cancel and make it positive, and negative 1 squared is positive 1. Therefore, we have negative 1 half t squared plus 1 half. I like to pull out the negative 1 half, you don't need to do this step if you don't want to. Okay, so let's write this down in our CDF. When t is between negative 1 and 0, the CDF is negative 1 half times t squared minus 1. Moving on now to when t is between 0 and 1. Let's move straight back into looking at our graph of the PDF. Now we're going to start the integral from negative infinity. So from negative infinity to negative 1, the PDF is 0. Then from negative 1 to 0, the PDF is negative x. And from 0 to whatever t is, the PDF is 0. Okay, so recall right now that t is just some number between 0 and 1. Okay, so let's write that down. By definition, f of t is the integral from negative infinity to t. We need to break this down into the pieces that we just discussed and saw on our graph. So first, between negative infinity and negative 1, we'll integrate 0. Next, between negative 1 and 0, we'll integrate negative x. And lastly, between 0 and t, we'll integrate 0. The integral of 0 is 0. The integral of negative x is negative x squared uh, divided by 2, which we are evaluating from negative 1 to 0. And lastly, the integral of 0 is 0. Okay, the zeros cancel. We plug in the bounds for negative x squared divided by 2, and we have 0 minus minus negative 1 squared divided by 2. The 0 goes away, the minus minus makes a plus, and the negative 1 squared is positive 1, leaving us with positive 1 half. Okay, so let's write this down in our CDF. When t is between 0 and 1, the CDF is 1 half. Okay, so moving on now to the fourth interval, where t is between 1 and 2. By definition, f of t is the integral from negative infinity to t of the PDF with respect to x. Let's move back to our graph of the PDF. We know that we are going to need to break this down. t is between 1 and 2. Therefore, we must start back at the negative infinity and work our way up. From negative infinity to negative 1, we integrate 0. Then from negative 1 to 0, we integrate negative x. From 0 to 1, we're integrating 0 again. And lastly, between 1 and whatever the value of t is, we're going to integrate 2 minus x, which is this linear line here. Okay, so let's write this down. Starting from negative infinity to negative 1, we're integrating 0. Then from negative 1 to 0, we're integrating negative x. From 0 to 1, we're integrating 0. And lastly, between 1 and t, we're integrating 2 minus x. Okay, I'm going to assume that you can do this calculation. I've written all the steps here, and you can slow down the video or pause it to see the details. Though, at the end, we get negative 1 half times t squared plus 2t minus 1, which we can now write down on our CDF up here. So lastly, let's consider the case where t is more than 2. You should know that if we integrate any PDF from negative infinity to positive infinity, we should get 1 by definition. This is basically stating that the total probability is 1, or in other words, 100%. So I should get 1 here. 
Okay, but let's go ahead and check. We need to integrate zero from negative infinity to negative one, then negative x from negative one to zero, and zero again from zero to one, and two minus x from one to two. And lastly, we integrate zero from two to whatever t is. Okay, so let's write that down again here. Okay, so I'm going to um, have all the steps and the calculations here. You can slow down or pause the video to see the details. Uh, but what you see here is in the end, we get one, which is awesome. Okay, the last piece to all CDFs should be one. All right, so great, uh, we're all done. Uh, thank you for working through this with me. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. If you like the video, please press like and uh, Thank you for watching.